May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Almighty God, you sent your Son to be the light of the world and to bring your people the radiance of your glory. Set us aflame with the fire of your love, that with pure hearts and minds we may come to the feast of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the awesome power of God as we hear his word and proclaim all that God has done. We can be confident that we share in his victory over death and live with him forever. So an enormous warm welcome to you all on this Easter morning as we celebrate our risen Christ. And a very warm welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Today, we're thinking of those events 2,000 years ago, and we're going to be hearing a reflection as if from Mary Magdalene, as if she'd written it herself. But we're going to begin by singing the Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. And if you're using the Orange Book, it's number 348.
How wonderful to sing those words of praise. And so we join in with our collect, our special prayer for Easter Day. God of glory, by raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope. For a new dawn day has dawned, and the way to life stands open. In our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated as Carol brings us our first reading. taken from Acts 10, verses 34 to 43. The Gentiles hear the good news. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that the God shows no favoritism. In every nation he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel that there is a peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging on a cross, but God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us, whom God has chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank in advance and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and testify that Jesus was the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one of all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing and probably dance to He is Risen. Jesus is alive 
If there were no resurrection We ourselves could not be raised But the Son of God is living So our hope is not in vain Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. He has defeated the powers of death. Hallelujah. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Hallelujah. He has the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Early, on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead just as he said would happen. Come, see where the body is lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy, and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Thank you, Tony. On this glorious Easter morning, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Saviour, 
May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Now, I'm sure most of us can remember where we were or what we were doing at a significant moment in time. For those of you who are old enough to remember, think back to the, when you heard the news of the death of John F. Kennedy or Princess Diana, or even more recently, the events of 9-11 or the death of our late Queen. If I was to ask you, can you remember where you were, what you were doing? Our ordinary daily lives and everyday actions take on a special meaning when they're linked with a truly memorable event. And yet, I'm sure if I asked you, you'd all have very different memories of those events. And it's exactly the same with our Gospels. All four Gospels tell us those ev the events of that s Sunday morning, the third day after Jesus' death. And yet the details vary as each writer tries to explain what for them seemed the most significant part of those momentous events and explain it in a way that the people they were writing to would understand. And just as your memories are not right or wrong, nor are the Gospel writers' memories right or wrong, they're just coming at it from a different angle as they place a different emphasis on what happened early that morning. In the Gospel reading that, from Matthew that Tony just read for, to us, we hear of Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. And Mary was such a common name at the time, it's not 100% clear which Mary this was. But they went to find Jesus. They had been there when he died. They had seen him hang on the cross and suffer that most painful and humiliating of death. They had looked on as his body was taken down and placed into the tomb. So they went to the grave, to the tomb, expecting to find his body there, still sealed in that cold, dark tomb behind the heavy stone that had been rolled over the entrance to the cave. But as they walked towards the tomb, towards that, that garden, the earth shook, the air trembled, and suddenly the stone wasn't in front of the tomb anymore and the tomb itself was flooded with a bright light. Can you imagine how they felt? It's little wonder the angel said to them, first of all, don't be afraid. Yesterday at Easter at the Tin, James was playing the part of the angel as Anne and I were trying to play the part of the two women. We weren't very good at convincing, doing convincing acting, I'm afraid. But it was still good fun. <laughs> but as I was reading this, and remembering the earth shook as Jesus died on the cross. And again as he is resurrected. I was reminded of another time in the Old Testament when the earth shook. There was a great wind, a bright light of fire. That time when Elijah hid in a cave. These all came to announce the presence of God. But God wasn't in the earthquake, he wasn't in the wind, and he wasn't in the fire. 
God was in the stillness that followed. And it is in the stillness that Easter morning that the angel tells Mary, the two Marys, that Jesus is alive. He has risen just like he said he would. And they turn and see him for themselves in that quiet, still garden. But instead of me telling you what it might have felt like that day, let's hear from Mary Magdalene herself. And I'm reading from a meditation by Nick Fawcett. We've used a number of his meditations over the, the Holy Week. I've never been able to say what it meant to me after the horror and the heartache, the darkness and despair, to hear the wonderful, astonishing news. Jesus is alive. I'd lived in a daze until then, Unable to take in the horror of what I'd seen, the anguish and the agony which he'd borne, with such quiet dignity and with awesome courage. He'd warned us what to expect, to expect the worst. But I suppose in our hearts we'd known it was coming, but we'd refused to accept it, hoping against hope there might be some other way. A path less costly, less awful for us all. But as we walked that morning to the tomb, all such thoughts were gone. Buried along with our Lord, life dark, cold, empty, bereft of meaning. We were blind to everything in our grief, scarcely aware of even the ground starting to shake or the light flooding around us. But when we reached the, tomb, the stone, rolled away from the tomb, we saw it all right. For a moment, we just stood there, gazing in confusion, not knowing where to turn or what to say. That's when it came, the news that took our breath away. He's not here. He's been raised. Come, see the place where he lay. We scarcely dared look at first, afraid it might be a dream. But finally we found the courage, and it was true, he was gone. Just the grave cloths left to show he'd been there. Can you imagine how we felt? Our hearts were pounding with excitement, but there was more to come. Things yet more wonderful. For even as we ran to tell the news, skipping with sheer delight, we saw him ahead of us. Jesus! The man we knew and loved, arms outstretched in welcome, waiting to greet us in his old familiar way. He had risen, just as he, we'd been told. Death was unable to hold him. Only, it wasn't just Jesus who rose that day. It was all of us. For there in the garden, life began again. Life which we thought had died in us forever. Hope reborn, faith renewed, love rekindled, joy restored. And we knew these could never be destroyed, for the proof was there before us.
as I said, a reflection written by Nick Fawcett. Jesus is alive. He lives today. Instead of his death being the end, it was and just is the beginning, the beginning of our lives, live free in the light of all he did for us. So let's determine to live in this light, the light of sins forgiven, hope reborn, faith rekindled, joy restored. And as Bishop Stephen urged us on, on Maundy Thursday at the Chrism service, let's go out into the world making Jesus known. Not just with our words, but with our attitudes and the way in which we live our lives. And if there are parts of our Gospels or any or scripture that we don't understand or we find challenging, let's accept that this is what faith means. Accepting the mystery of God and living in the light of Easter. Amen. Amen. Those of you who were here on Maundy Thursday when we did the foot washing may recognise this is one of the bowls in which we were washing people's feet <coughs> or hands. But now we have an opportunity to renew our baptism vows. Praise God who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise there. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ was baptised in the river Jordan, we thank you for the gift of water to cleanse and re us and revive us. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the Promised Land. We thank you that through the water, deep waters of death you brought your Son and raised him to life in triumph. Bless this water that your servants who are washed in it may be one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection. To be cleansed and delivered from all sin. Send your Holy Spirit upon them. Bring them to new birth in the household of faith and raise them with Christ to, the, to full and eternal life. For all might, majesty, authority and power are yours, now and forever. Amen. So let us affirm our common faith in Jesus Christ. <coughs> Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, and makes Jesus Christ known in the world. I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
And just as at our baptism, we are sprinkled with the waters of baptism. So I invite you now to remember your baptism and be thankful. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all who have been baptised in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism, and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And I invite Jill to bring us our prayers of intercession. With joy in our hearts, come, let us pray together. Father, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Shed his glorious light on all Christian people, that we may live as those who believe in the triumphs of the cross. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray especially for our brothers and sisters in the troubled nations of the world, for South Sudan, for Ukraine, for the Holy Land and for all who are persecuted for their faith. May your spirit of peace uplift and sustain them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all we know and love, both near and far. May their eyes be open to see the glory of the risen Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. We pray for those who suffer pain and anguish. Remember all those on the benefice prayer list and those known to us. Grant them faith to reach out towards the healing wounds of Christ and be filled with his peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember before you those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Especially we think of Pat Thompson and her family. Unite us with them in your undying love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Join our voices, we pray, Lord our God, to the songs of all your saints in proclaiming that you gave us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jill. Let's stand ready to share the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. So let's offer one another a sign of his peace. And we continue our service with our next hymn. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. It's number eight if you're using the orange book.
Be present. Be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is in us. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Be to the Lord. Let us give the thanks for the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Why is it right to give thanks and praise? Listen, and we will hear. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all things, living things, reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us your love even when things go wrong. Jesus knew hurt and pain. Through him you wipe away our tears and fill us with your peace. And we join with the angels to sing your praise. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, your hearts are open for you. Give us this bread always. Jesus, love of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! And just a reminder, if you wish to receive by priest and tincture, please come to the rail this side of the church. And if you wish to receive from Common Cup, you're welcome to come and stand or kneel at the front rail on this side. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, give him to We join together in our post-communion prayer. God of love, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so today dying to sin, that we may evermore live in with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Unaware that many here and at home have not been able to join with us in communion today, we say together the prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Just before we sing our final hymn, any children present, you may wish to go down to Hilton House now, where they're just beginning an Easter egg hunt. And you're very welcome to go and join them there. You may, for some of you, may wish to have an adult with you, and I fully understand that. But I will stand now for our final hymn, Thine Be the Glory, Risen and Conquered the Sun, number 672.
just before we finish. If you haven't got a copy of Canal Side News, please either collect one from the back of the church or if you're online, contact us and we can send you an email version. You will find details of the, surf, the events of this week in the diary at the back. And on the back page of Canal Side News this week is a poem by our lovely friend Pat Thompson. And it really does echo our Easter faith. And I would invite you to read that and, in, and sh contemplate what she has to say. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, Open to you who believe in the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting forth from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you today and always. Amen. With the risen Christ within you, go in peace, the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.